Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, so the first thing, uh, we're kind of getting into gifting season now, uh, so we're starting to see companies put out some of their, uh, their collectible items, uh, some of their special edition things. They're gonna make some good gifts, and the first one today, I've got right here is from Schrade Old Timer. Uh, this is a combination fixed blade and stockman, or sorry, fixed blade and pocket knife set that comes in at just 20 bucks right now. Obviously these aren't gonna be the same as the old school uh, American made old timers, but as a gift for 20 bucks, these actually are surprisingly good. First off, you've got that sharp finger fixed blade, just a classic hunting knife pattern. Uh, same kind of old school Delrin type of scales with that faux saw cut pattern going on. And they've still got a carbon steel blade on this. They didn't go with a, uh, a simple stainless on this. So that's a nice old school feel there as well. Hollow grind on this, unlike some of the old convex grind versions, uh, or at least I, I have an old school American convex grind version that's a bit different, um, but still really cool. Very nice small pattern. Like I said, excellent hunting knife. That's exactly what it was designed for. You can get right out there with your fingertip right to the tip of the knife very easily and you've still got a nice broad sweep for those skinning tasks. We've also got a small uh, small slip joint knife. This is the Minuteman. Uh, very small as you can see, um, about two and three quarters of an inch when closed so the blades obviously are significantly smaller than that. Um, I forgot to measure them before I got started, sorry for that. Um, simple stainless steel here, they don't tell us what it is but again this is a $20 gift set which Again, surprisingly, like all the back springs are nice and flush. The action is even decent. There's no blade rub going on. Same kind of handles as that sharp finger there. $20 gift set with a tin and with a sheath. Can't really go wrong. All right, next up, we've got a new limited edition from Swiss Army or from Victorinox, the makers of the Swiss Army knife with their 2021 Zodiac series of Huntsman knife. This is the year of the ox. Um, and it comes also in a very nice uh, gift box here, has almost like a woven texture to it. And I've already slid the, uh, the gold band to the side here so I can take this apart inside there. It's got a nice print on gold paper with Chinese on one side, American, American, English on the other. That was dumb, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm not gonna take it out because I don't wanna get fingerprints on it, but it's just your standard Huntsman with a nice uh, ox graphic on the front of it there. Looks really cool and it's gonna go, well, go along well with all the previous year's versions. Um, and you know, for the Chinese American out there or Chinese anywhere out there that you wanna give a nice uh, Swiss Army knife to, check these out. They're a really cool price on these, uh, 99 bucks. All right, next up, I've got a, uh, a premium knife from Boker. Uh, I've actually got a lot from Boker this week. It's kind of uh, a very, very Boker heavy week, but that's great. Uh, first two items are genuine article made in Solingen, Germany bokers. We've got a bunch of new scouts, both the standard version and the junior scout, uh, with some really premium treatments going on. This particular one is one of the more expensive ones, comes in at 450, uh, but I think the, the cheaper ones start at about 225, and those don't come with the Damascus steel blades. Now, as for the Damascus, this is an American-made Damascus. It's a Chad Nichols raindrop pattern Damascus. So you've definitely got that premium build quality going on there, and it is backed up with the rest of the knife. We've got nickel silver bolsters, stag covers on this particular knife. And check out the cool thickness on that one too. Definitely a hand-filling grip. And of course, you get the nice uh, traction from the, uh, the chewed up parts of the stag. It's not chewed up. I forgot the, the name for that type of word, the bark, whatever you want to call it. You get a nice, nice, bit of, nice bit of grip from that. But there's a cool little scoop out going on here from the handle into the bolster, which is treated really well. There's a bit of some curvature to it, and that's really hard to do as seamlessly as they have here, and they've really nailed it. It's very nice indeed. Blade length on this is about uh, about three and an eighth thereabouts. Uh, yeah, the Junior Scouts are about two and three quarters if you want a smaller knife to carry. Uh, and these do come in with a nice box as well, but I've, I've got that in the package over there um, because I wanted to keep all the attention on this awesome knife. But the drop point profile is gonna work really well if you wanna use this knife, if you wanna actually carry it. And it's a little cramped if you have larger hands or even slightly larger than average hands like myself in terms of the actual grip. But I'm still able to get, uh, even despite it being 
a little bit cramped, I'm able to get a fairly comfortable hold on that. I just don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of wiggle room, so to speak. But you can definitely get a lot of force behind this blade if you need to, because it's, you know, you're not going to feel like you're getting any, uh, generating any hot or sharp spots in your hand when you're really pushing down. Full flat grind for good slicing geometry, nice versatile shape, premium construction. Next up, got another genuine article, German made Boker. This is the Boxer. And despite a very modern look here, this is actually a slip joint. You can see the back spring right there. There's no locking mechanism whatsoever. There's two variants of these. They both come in just under 180 and we've got a black canvas as well as this brown burlap micarta right here. It actually has almost like a, a goldenrod or a honey type of coloration to it right now. Uh, but of course, uh, this type of material, micartas aren't aren't color fast, they aren't, they aren't UV stable. So over time, this will get a bit darker. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but enjoy the like the cool honey color while it lasts. The blades are M390. So nice premium steel option there with this real heavy dark stone washed look going on uh, a bit over three inches. So it's not a sub three inch blade if that's important where you live. But a really cool slicing shape, nice high flat grind. When you grip the knife, I've got enough space to have a nice full grip and really put that blade to work. You're going to be able to use the tip fairly effectively because it does drop down a little bit, but you've got plenty of belly for slicing. I really like that. As far as the walk and talk, you got a nice half stop there with some good, uh, some good retention, not super stiff, just right. I'd say now what I especially like about this particular knife is the fact that it comes out of their, their German man manufacturing. A lot of times the German made knives tend to be a bit more traditional in their, uh, in their aesthetic. So it's really cool to see some more modern uh, offerings coming out of Germany. So you get that real premium construction going on with a, uh, with a different type of look than you may be used to. All right, moving on to a Boker plus item, which is made in China, as opposed to the, uh, the German factories, we've got a new iteration of the Brad Zinker urban trappers. This is called the urban trapper linear. Uh, so called because it's a much more kind of straight lined version or straight lined interpretation of Zinker's classic, folding trapper design that has been a cla you know, I say classic, it's been in Boker's lineup for years. And it's just a great, great executive knife, great gentleman's knife. And these new versions are certainly no exception. We got two versions right now, there's a Coca Bolo uh, wood version with a satin blade that comes in about 8250. Uh, and then this version right here with a dark stone wash, uh, you know, very black stone wash with green canvas micarta comes in at about 98 right now. The steel there is VG 10 blade length about three and a quarter, nice high flat grind again, nice narrow profile, you're going to be able to get into some tight corners with this blade. Now one of the things you see on a lot of Boker, a lot of these urban trappers is a horizontal grain, obviously, you don't get that with this black stone wash, uh, which they chose to look really good against this green micarta handle, which is offset by these these brass anodized uh, pocket clips, liners and barrel spacers that really, really sparkles next to that canvas. It's just a really cool look. The fit and finish on these is really good as you would expect. The liners are nice and flush, nice liner lock there with just a little bit of jimping going on. The spine of the knife is treated very well. You've got a little bit of a crown spine here at the back with the subtle jimping that transitions into a full length swedge. Just really, really nicely done. Deep carry pocket clip, of course, just like the, uh, the other versions. So you're going to be able to carry it very discreetly. Maybe not quite as discreetly with that cool, cool gold color, but I'll take the gold. That's, it's just a really, really cool combination of colors going on right here. And right, that's not the only line extension to the Urban Trapper series we've got today. We've also got new lockback versions. Uh, the original lockbacks, I think, came out earlier this year. If I'm not remembering uh, correctly, I'm, I may not be. Uh, but fairly recent to the lineup. Uh, and we've now got the Urban Trapper Petite available with that back mounted lock as well. Two versions right now, we've got a Coca Bola wood again, as well as this black G 10 90 bucks for both of them blade length here is under three inches. So if you uh, if you need that you've got it here, still great narrow profile VG 10 steel horizontal grain going on. The onlays are rounded a little bit just like the bigger brothers. So they feel nice and even in the hand, not too blocky, deep carry pocket clip, nice back lock put together real nicely. Swedge again, no, uh, no crowning on the spine in this case. And that's because they'd rather go with the, uh, the completely flush backspacer into the tang of the knife, 
to, for a bit more of a more of that type of feel rather than the the rounded bit here, which makes sense on a, a knife like this where you don't have a backspacer to to mate up to. These are two hand opening affairs, as you can see right here. Uh, small fullers or a small fuller just on one side, I should say. Uh, so you can get uh, your nail in there instead of a nail nick. But even without using that, it's very easy to pinch onto, even if you've got big fingers like myself. All right, this next boker was actually bigger than I expected based on just uh, the photos I had seen. This is the new Boker Plus Yen's Anso 67 Pro coming in about 98 bucks or about 97.50, I should say. It's definitely an imaginative shape, but I don't think it actually sacrifices the usability. You've still got a plenty of handle there. The handle, the feel in the hand, I should say, is quite comfortable. And then you've essentially just got a gigantic uh, sheep's foot blade, great for everyday and heavier utility jobs that you might need it for. Now the weight on this is five ounces. Uh, most of that comes from the blade itself, which is a bit on the thicker side. Uh, the handles, it's the handles themselves actually don't strike me as being uh, all that heavy. I was kind of surprised when I picked them up because uh, we've got zebra wood for the handle scales. This is already uh, nice and lightweight because this is not a, uh, a heavily stabilized material that's full of epoxy or resin. And then the liners are inset as well. So it's not, they take a little bit of the wood away there instead of just adding up another layer of metal. And then the, uh, the top side or the, uh, the top liner, I should say, is also skeletonized to remove even more weight. So that kind of makes up a little bit for the, uh, the beefiness that you get behind the blade itself. That blade is D2, horizontal grain on here as well. Length uh, just shy of three and a half inches here with a high flat grind. Definitely a heavy working type of geometry for a pocket knife. Backing that up are a few other touches. The thumb studs are very oversized here. So even if you've got work gloves on, it's gonna be very easy to open those. And we've also got uh, standard washers in the pivot, so it's gonna be less susceptible to dirt or grit. Again, backing up that hardworking mission. Uh, maybe a micarta handle would have been more appropriate to really complete the picture. Um, but if you're looking for a classy knife that can really take a, uh, you know, put in a lot of hard hours, this would be a really cool option and definitely something different for sure. All right, this next uh, and last boker for this week, although there might be some more for you next week, I did have to edit out a few just for length of the video. We've got a, uh, a collaboration with Dave Wenger of Wenger Blades. Boker have brought his mini tracker design into production, uh, coming in at a really good price right now for about 75 bucks. We've got 1095 steel here, about 3 16 of an inch thick, nice and durable, with that kind of mini tracker uh, style of blade that, that Dave Wenger has kind of really made a name on because he does them very well, in fact. Now the lead section here at the front, well actually let's start with the back section. The back section is hollow ground. Uh, you can kind of pull off uh, those, some of those draw knife or spoke shave types of uses with that section. Of course, it's gonna work fairly well for small whittling because the recurve here isn't as aggressive as some types of uh, tracker knives can get. In fact, you do have a fairly straight heel here without any real recurve, which is a boon for, uh, for those whittling tasks. Now the front end here, um, as I was feeling it, it's not quite flat ground, but it's not quite convex either. Um, I'll try to describe what's going on here, and this may just be a way for them to get close to a convex grind in their, uh, in their production facilities, but you've almost got a small shoulder right here in the middle of the, uh, the primary grind here, where it's flat up here near the top, and definitely flat ground here behind the edge, but you've got a little bit of a, uh, a radius right here along that middle shoulder. Kind of interesting and doesn't really, uh, you don't really see it, but you kind of feel it. It's very subtle, um, but you're still gonna get a little more, more strength out here near the tip section for, uh, for beating on it than you will with that, uh, that recurve section right there. And the main thing where a convex grind usually helps out, uh, especially on, on heavier duty knives, is on chopping. Obviously this is not a big chopper. We're only about 5.3 inches of blade length. But with the, uh, the handle here, we've got micarta and a bit of a flare at the back. You're able to choke back and you can kind of get some, uh, just based on feel, some decent feeling snap cuts going on. And this is not, never gonna be a heavy chopper, but you might be able to do some light stuff fairly well, like thin branches, that sort of thing, you're gonna be able to pull off. Now, as far as the sheath, we've got Kydex, snaps in quite well as well as their standard belt attachment right here, which has sort of a J-hook vibe going on. You can kind of slip that on a belt without it slipping off too easily. And also uh, the two holes here will fit a small tech lock and you can fit a large tech lock out there as well if you'd like something a little bit different aftermarket. 
All right, next up we've got a, uh, a titanium frame lock from Artisan Cutlery and Michael Gavco. Um, or sorry, Mark, Michael Gavick. This is the Gavco Great White from Artisan Cutlery coming in about 200 bucks right now. Definitely an out there blade shape. As you can see, it's uh, no, it, it doesn't look like that knife, but <laughs> it is a it is a little bit more out there. Definitely not a, a a function first type of blade shape. It will still function. Don't get me wrong, but they uh, I think they were going for a real statement piece, a real style piece with this knife. You've got S thirty five VN steel, so it will hold an edge about three point four inches of length and fairly narrow handle, I would say, with this titanium here. It tapers towards the back. You can still get, there's still plenty there to get a hold on, don't get me wrong, but you've also got that choil there at the front where you can choke up. You'd really be able to do some nice, nice tip work with this particular knife. It's got a very acute point right there and good kind of ripping, cutting profile going on. Flat ground, um, this would actually be pretty good ripping through cardboard, I would bet, due to the recurve there and the fact that uh, you've got a straight edge out here near the tip. So as you're getting towards the end of the cut, you're not gonna have a bunch of belly still uh, sliding up that you might uh, have your knife slip out of the cardboard with. Now the action on this is quite good. We've got ball bearings in the pivot per usual, as you would expect, but no flipper. This is a thumb hole opening device right here. Of course, very easy to open with the thumb hole. You can even get that, uh, that middle finger flick going on very easily. All right, next up on the opposite end of the price spectrum, uh, we're going to get to a little bit less crazy folding knife, and we're going to go back to uh, some little more, little more crazy folding knives in a second. Um, but CJRB, which is Artisan Cutlery's budget subsidiary, this knife is called the Mylea. It's their new collaboration with uh, YouTuber Sharp and Pointy Swags. Comes in at a very affordable, uh, about thirty-eight bucks right now. That pricing is actually a little interesting um, because a lot of the uh, a lot of the artisan stuff comes in between thirty and fifty bucks. And this is a, one of the, uh, the smaller knives, so you might expect it to be a, a little bit less expensive, but the reason it's uh, not at the, uh, the bottom floor of their price ceiling, or the bottom floor of their price floor, you know what I mean, is because of the steel here. This is not a, a D2, which they use frequently. This is their new uh, budget-oriented powder metallurgy steel called RPM9. And what they tell us they were going for with this type of steel was D2 types of edge retention, but also stainless and easier to maintain. And I've been playing around with a Rhea with that particular steel, steel and I think they've kind of hit that, that cross section very well. That blade length is less than two and a half inches, so it's very discreet. Nice uh, aggressive sheep's foot or, or clipped off sheep's foot type of profile here. Little bit of belly to the, uh, the edge there, though. It's kind of a, a modified sheep's foot profile, I would say, with a nice high flat grind for a good balance, again, of slicing characteristics and power. Blade steel is fairly thin. We're at about 0.1 inches, so it's a little bit over 330 seconds of an inch. Just a good working shape in a, uh, a nice small package. Now the handles here, uh, well actually red is a pretty, uh, is, is a color that's carried through all the variants of this knife. There's three colors right now. You've got the standard red version here, which has red thumb studs and a black pivot collar. But you've also got a, a jade G10 and a black G10 that has a pivot collar and thumb studs that are also kept red. Got an inset liner lock right there, as you can see. Knife folds up nicely, ball bearings in the pivot, deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. We've also got a nice hidden lanyard attachment point there at the back. But you'll see right there when I've got it closed that in addition to those thumb studs, this is actually a front flipper design as well. And even for me, you guys know I'm not the best, but I'm able to do it with this knife very easily. As for the shape of that handle right there, it actually works very well for me. I can fit about three of my fingers on it, but because of that kind of bulb or that flare there at the back, you can still get a nice solid grip on it. All right, now we're back to some slightly more, uh, slightly more crazy designs. We've got the new second generation, the 2021 version they're calling it, of the Mantis Gearhead from Grant and Gavin Hall. Now there's two versions here. I've got uh, the uh, least expensive and the most expensive here in my hands. They start at about uh, 150 and they top out at about 340. Now and most of that cost actually goes to the mechanism itself because uh, it, it's not going towards the steel on the uh, least expensive version. It is 440C. So it's not, uh, it's not a high end steel, but it's not bottom of the barrel either. At least they gave you something decent there. But we've got a liner lock here. But watch as I close that, you can see that lever pop up. This is a very kind of steampunk inspired design because the opening method is actually that lever right there. Simply push your thumb there, 
pull it back and it brings the blade out. It's definitely cool. I think that is its kind of overriding purpose. It's just to be cool and it certainly pulls that off. It's a little bit smoother too than the, uh, the original versions, the original Mantis versions of this that I remember uh, were a little bit harder to actuate uh, the action on, but these, uh, these I have found to be quite simple to operate. A blade length on these is under three inches, about two and seven eighths it looks like. Nice hollow grind on this drop point, uh, drop point shape with a swedge. Fairly thin blade stock again, so it's still going to be a decent working profile for, uh, for your daily utility types of stuff. A few different colors, there's also a Tonto shape. You can get it with or without this, uh, this nice brass anodized look here on the gears here on the front. A few different colors on the frame, different options, and a nice pocket clip there on the back. Single position, so keep that in mind. And then the highest end version right here. Uh, are the versions that come both with the Damascus blade steel and the carbon fiber plates, uh, and, or actually more than just the plates, the carbon fiber bits on the handle rather than the aluminum. Now that does bring the weight down a little bit, um, not quite half an ounce lighter than the aluminum versions, uh, but just a little bit there. Now as far as the Damascus, they don't tell us exactly what their base metals are, but they, it is a 62 layer Damascus. And as you can see here from the spine shot, they're using two different layers of, uh, of Damascus cladding with a center layer of a different steel. So uh, that's a pretty cool bit of construction there. And it creates another cool look uh, or another cool design element from the top side as well. This one also has got a copper, uh, copper gear ring instead of the brass on that other one. But the knife is, uh, it's assembled here in the USA, but some of the parts may, uh, may have been made overseas. Uh, but at least some of it is being put together here, which I like. And if you're, if you're just looking for something that's cutting edge, something that's out there and a little bit different, these guys definitely have that going for it. But speaking of US construction, I'm real happy to close the video out today with some new stuff from Tops that is 100% made here in the USA. And long awaited is the, uh, the other items in Tops' Dicer series. They've had their, uh, their chef knife and their pairing knife, although I think their pairing knife actually makes a better hunting knife. Neither here nor there. We've got the, uh, the Dicer 10, which is the slicing knife, as well as the Dicer 7 and Dicer 4, which you've got your 7 is the serrated bread knife, and the 4, they're calling a steak knife, uh, but I'm actually very happy to see no serrations on this particular steak knife design. Now they've gone nice and premium with the steel here. We've got S35VN, a bit of a rarity from Tops, but given that these are uh, kitchen-oriented designs, uh, it's good to see a stainless there rather than their, uh, their coated 1095 steel, which would not make a, uh, a very good kitchen companion at all. 1095 would, just not coated 1095. It kind of would create some drag on your food. Uh, but there's a nice darkened stone wash finish going on. Uh, not, a, not a black stone wash, but you know, a bit darker. It's got like a bit of an acid etch going on there. Uh, the Dicer 4 has a about 4.4 inch blade there. G10 handles in that blue and black coloration with a nice thick black layer at the base. Not a ton of handle length on this, but again, given that it's a steak knife, not a huge deal. It certainly feels good uh, in, in, as I'm sitting here mimicking a, a steak knife cutting action going on. But I think this would make a decent outdoors knife too, just like I said the, uh, their smaller knife would as well. Because these do actually come with Kydex sheaths that will fit a large tech lock if you pick one of those up as well. But because you have that option to kind of take it with you like that, not a bad hunting knife here either, uh, but just decent all around knife. Good fishing knife, I think too, because uh, the blade is a little narrower than the, uh, the smaller, ver smaller knife in this series. But I also really love the Dicer 10. Nice 10 inch slicer blade here. Great for carving turkey. For those of you who are uh, gonna be able to celebrate Thanksgiving, cook your own turkey this year. Also a really good uh, larger butchering knife. It would make a great knife at a barbecue, maybe break down some ribs. Good thin blade stock, high flat grind, S35VN again. Comes with a Kydex sheath so you can throw it uh, in your cooking kit. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend carrying this on your belt, but that those sheaths will fit a tech lock as well. And then the seven inch offset has a bit of an offset there. Uh, me personally, I tend to prefer a, a chef, or sorry, a bread knife that has a little bit of a curvature to the edge because it gives you a little bit of uh, knuckle clearance and I find it easier to slice uh, into most things that way. But this, uh, even though this is straight, because it has that offset there, it kind of gets you that clearance you need. I also like the particular serrations they've gone with here. They're almost like the VEFS flat top serrations in a way, um, but they don't come to a, uh, an aggressive point on here. They are a little bit flattened off there. 
I don't find that to be a problem because actually this is going to sharpen more easily over time. So you're going to be able to use this uh, very easily for a long time with proper care. Whereas some serrations get very difficult to sharpen very, very quickly. And finally, also from Tops, we've actually had this in for a, a few weeks. I just haven't had a chance to bring it out yet is the Yukon Hawk. Uh, this comes in at about 230 right now. And the blade is made out of 1095 with that same uh, similar tumbled finish to the S35 VN over here. Some really nice touches and the handle itself uh, has some pretty cool stuff going on, but I'll get to that in a second. Now the head itself, rather than a full hammer pull or a flattened hammer pull, you've actually got some ridges back there. That's going to be good for uh, hammering in tent stakes that uh, can actually help grab into the wood a little bit when you're hammering down. So you might be able to transfer a little more force into it. And then a really aggressive uh, for a, a woods running axe, I would say type of head shape right here. But I like that it comes so far down the beard here at the bottom because the edges of this, uh, this 1095 is actually nicely rounded over. So you can get a fairly decent hold on it here. Uh, normally this type of axe construction is not very comfortable when you hold it up, up here right behind the head to do carving stuff. But this is not all that bad. You are going to be fighting a little bit of weight from the handle, but in a pinch, you could definitely do some, uh, some smaller tasks with this by choking up like so. But as I said, the handles got some cool stuff going on. Uh, as you can see here, we've got a thick black layer as the base that actually looks like canvas micarta to me, but it's the G 10. That's really cool. And this is actually called sure touch G 10. Uh, and it's black and orange. The orange is just your typical G 10. But where it gets interesting is the black is actually a rubberized type of material. It isn't G 10. You can actually feel that just a little bit with your finger right here. So in those two spots, it may give you a little bit of extra grip. It's also going to give you a little bit of extra grip here on the outside on the outside radiuses, but it's also going to absorb a little bit of shock when you're doing the heavy chopping. Just those, uh, especially if you're doing a long day's worth of work, that uh, small percentage difference in more comfort could make a big difference over time for sure. And it's just really cool to see something like that. On top of that, you've got a nice mask for the front. You've got tops of survival whistle right there. If I can get that straight for the camera, there you go. And in addition, in addition to that, a nice belt loop for carrying this with you on the go. All right, that's all I've got to show you this week. Make sure to leave us a note down there in the comments, which one of these were your favorites. And thanks to everyone out there who's subscribed to this channel. Uh, we're, we're definitely charging ahead, trying to hit that 100,000 mark before the end of the year. So would appreciate it if you haven't subscribed already. Would love it if you could as well at this point in time. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. While you're over there, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.